you have pause there but here in listening part c you get pause in the beginning 90 seconds at in the beginning and then all six questions come at a stretch okay and all of them will be multiple choice questions all 12 questions will be multiple choice questions the only difference here is in reading part c you have four options but in listening part c you have three options for each question So now let us begin with this particular test. Again here, just like pre, um, just like listening part B, pre-listening is very, very important. So once you develop this skill of pre-listening, you're definitely going to get very good score. Almost everyone at Acumen passes in the listening test. Almost everyone. Hardly ever, I just can't even remember over the past two years that anybody has failed in the listening test no it's most easiest aspect provided that you apply the right strategy right and a lot of students have been able to score a as well so the only thing you need here is right strategy and exposure to the language you need to be familiar with the language okay so let us look at here also you have the extract um the context sentence so here it says it is an interview with a critical care physician Dr. Munro. Now, why is he being interviewed? Right? So, whenever you listen to a podcast or an interview, why do you have that person on board? It's mainly because they were either involved in that study or a research, or they have found a new way of treating the patients, or maybe they, they have recently experienced um, that situation. So, here also it says that they have been to Liberia during an outbreak of Ebola. So, that is the reason why they are being interview now let us look at the questions here you have mainly attitude and opinion questions as well as main idea and purpose question these are the four question types that you have in listening part c okay. you can have the the most common type is opinion and attitude it could be opinion and attitude of the speaker group of people uh, patients healthcare professionals then you can have purpose question and you can have main idea question these are the three main common types of questions that you get in listening parts B. so as we do it today i will be helping you understand the different types of questions and how do you approach those questions right put things together Okay, so here you have first question. The first portion of any listening test will be mainly about the overview, particularly in listening part C, okay, because first they would, this is the, just the opening up of the conversation. So see here also what led Dr. Munro to volunteer Ebola patient in Liberia. So why he in the first place decided to go and volunteer there. So he wanted to try out new ways of treating the disease. He felt he had a duty. Okay. And he was worried about the scale of the epidemic. Now let us discuss for each of the option what kind of conversation do you expect? So for part A, what do you expect if, if this is the correct answer? If option A is the correct answer, try out new ways of treating the disease. New ways of treating the disease. And try out, it says. So what do you think? Type in the chat box. What do you think the doctor will be discussing here? If this is the correct answer.
the question is basically asking us the reason isn't it what led led is past participle of lead so what led him to go and volunteer there so i have to find out the reason why he decided to go there so if a is the correct answer yeah so maybe he had some new ways of treating this disease okay uh, probably he or his team yeah yes it could be a new vaccine yeah very good so it could be a new vaccine or it can be a new form of treatment that he wanted to try out because he might have developed it but then you need a pool of patients to try it out so because he wanted to experiment right uh, try out basically means experiment he wanted to experiment those methods with the patients yeah then b if b is the correct answer he did not have any such selfish um, you know intention but he did just because of because he thought it was his responsibility yes. and that is the reason he did it and what do you mean by scale of the epidemic scale of the epidemic if this is the correct answer what kind of data do you expect here see again i would warn you that this part is the beginning and therefore you would hear um, you know about ways in which it can be treated you would definitely hear about uh, you know how many patients there were affected by it so if c is the correct answer what do you expect scale of the epidemic he wanted to prevent or stop it there but how would i how would i identify he went there because of scale of the epidemic what do you mean by this phrase scale of the epidemic number of patients yes yeah, it could be the proportion or number of patients who get affected by it yeah okay, so this is typically a detail question where you have to specifically find out why he decided to go and practice there this detail type of question is very very rare out of 12 questions you could have one or two questions which are detail types of questions but usually in the beginning it would be detail type of question because beginning would be just an overview of the entire topic okay and let us look at the second we will do two questions at a stretch here second question what attitude was prevalent amongst ebola patients so you can clearly see that this is an attitude question yes but attitude not of dr monero but the patients isn't it what attitude was prevalent amongst the ebola patients that he encountered again look at the answer choices pay attention to negative words mistrust of medical intervention unwillingness to come to terms with the disease and a belief that treatment was best administered within the family do you see any similarity uh, similarity in the answer choices you see any two answer choices which are very close to each other and one answer choice which is slightly different than the other two a and c yeah a and c are quite close because they both talk about treatment do you see this 
intervention and intervention and both options tell you that people were not very happy with the intervention that were taken by the medical fraternity because a also says mistrust of medical intervention and c also says it is best administered within the family that means they did not trust the medical interventions uh, that were administered in the institution or the standard medical therapy whereas b mainly talks about the disease itself and not the treatment what do you mean by this phrase come to terms with something come to terms with something what does it mean except this to come to terms with something means to accept that situation to accept the reality for example now we all have come to the terms that we have to leave with corona we, we don't have any other alternative so here it says unwillingness to come to terms with the disease that means they were not willing to accept that situation okay so what we are going to do now is i would play this audio you would answer these two questions one is a detailed question where you need to find out why he decided to go and volunteer there particularly the reason for it not the summary of whole conversation but in second one because it is an attitude question you have to go for a summary of how the patients thought about it so they would not straight away say that the patients were not willing to take treatment they were not willing to accept it as a disease but you would have to infer from whatever is being explained there now yeah, and both the questions will come in sequence but because it is an interview so after dr munro has answered one question the interviewer will ask a next question and that is the time when you would move to question number 32 the interviewer will be just facilitating the whole interview so you don't need to pay much attention like your answer would not come from what the interviewer is saying you are going to focus mainly on what dr munro is saying but interviewer will help you to navigate through the questions the interviewer will help you how uh, the interview is progressing further okay So first two questions Today we're speaking to Dr. Kyle Munro, a critical care physician who went to Liberia as a volunteer in order to treat patients during an outbreak of Ebola. Dr. Munro, tell us a little about Ebola and explain your reasons for volunteering. Sure. Ebola virus is a severe, often fatal illness. Without treatment, 9 out of 10 people who contract the virus die, many from dehydration, hyperbolemia from excessive vomiting, loss of nutrients due to diarrhea or organ failure. The disease was reaching epidemic proportions in some areas, so outside help was needed. The irony is that the necessary medical care is relatively simple by modern standards and I felt a kind of moral obligation to go and ensure that it was provided. Saving lives might require as little as clean IV needles, fluids and basic lab tests, things we take for granted in resource-rich parts of the world where they're at our disposal all the time. That isn't always the case in remote parts of Africa where supplies can be scarce and the necessary expertise lacking. And how did the patients you were treating respond to your presence? Well, to give you some sort of idea of what we were dealing with, the first two patients I treated were a brother and sister. Both had developed Ebola symptoms, which often presents like flu with fever and pain, and straight away they fled to the bush because they were fearful of what might happen to them if they were treated. They were found quite quickly because they were too weak to run, but even with treatment, both later died. Indeed, such was the fatality rate that 9 out of 10 people who entered our treatment facility were never seen again by their family members. So you can see what those attitudes were based on. And is it Okay, now I'm playing it for a second time for two questions. 
Today, we're speaking to Dr. Kyle Munro, a critical care physician who went to Liberia as a volunteer in order to treat patients during an outbreak of Ebola. Dr. Munro, tell us a little about Ebola and explain your reasons for volunteering. Sure. Ebola virus is a severe, often fatal illness. Without treatment, 9 out of 10 people who contract the virus die, many from dehydration, hyperbulimia from excessive vomiting, loss of nutrients due to diarrhea or organ failure. The disease was reaching epidemic proportions in some areas, so outside help was needed. The irony is that the necessary medical care is relatively simple by modern standards, and I felt a kind of moral obligation to go and ensure that it was provided. Saving lives might require as little as clean IV needles, fluids and basic lab tests, things we take for granted in resource-rich parts of the world where they're at our disposal all the time. That isn't always the case in remote parts of Africa where supplies can be scarce and the necessary expertise lacking. And how did the patients you were treating respond to your presence? Well, to give you some sort of idea of what we were dealing with, the first two patients I treated were a brother and sister. Both had developed Ebola symptoms, which often presents like flu, with fever and pain, and straight away they fled to the bush because they were fearful of what might happen to them if they were treated. They were found quite quickly because they were too weak to run, but even with treatment, both later died. Indeed, such was the fatality rate that 9 out of 10 people who entered our treatment facility were never seen again by their family members. So you can see what those attitudes were based on. And is it true you had to wear a lot of specialised clothes? So now I would want you to type in your answers. Okay, so those who decided to go with A for, okay, so that A is for 32. And for 31. Mm -hmm. It's either B or C. Mm -hmm. So let me discuss this with all of you, right? Did he talk about any new form of treatment? Any new form of treatment? No, in fact, he explained how just the simple IV needles okay, and IV sets will be required to treat the patients. If I show you, through the answer to the transcript, in fact. Can you see it here? It says that the disease was reaching epidemic proportion. So that is true. As I told you, this is first part of the test. So they would also describe some basic data about it. But he explained that the necessary medical care is relatively simple by modern standards and I felt kind of moral obligation to go and ensure that it was provided. And then he explained that it would re require simple IV needles and basic lab tests and fluids. So it was not a very fancy treatment that one had to give and nothing about new treatment that he wanted to try there. You know, that he had some new medication which uh, he thought he would go there and try out to see if it is helping the patients in any way. No, it's, it, it was definitely not about A at all. And he said that he felt kind of more an obligation, so that is B. B is the correct answer here. Okay. So it 
the the disease was reaching epidemic proportion but was it the reason why he decided to go we were looking for reason why he decided to go and volunteer there okay for second one i can see a lot of you have gone with a b and c okay again all three yeah let us discuss so definitely he did say that the patients were not willing to to take treatment right it, he gave an example as to how um, those patients which he was describing fled in the bush they did not take treatment right here because they were fearful of what might happen to them if they were treated so people did not have enough trust on the medical intervention okay? and they were found very quickly so they they were found but still they died later on so it's true that people were not trusting the medical intervention but how can we rule out c here is because nothing about treatment within the family it didn't say that people were willing to take those herbal medicines or people thought home remedies would work or people thought certain kind of diet would work in fact they fled to bush that means they did not take treatment at all not even the treatment that can be administered within the family so a is the correct answer mistrust of medical intervention okay. nothing about uh, accepting the disease itself because as soon as they were diagnosed they fled to the bush that means they accepted that there was something wrong with them the main conversation is about their willingness to take treatment i could show that again for you so even after taking treatment both of they died and that is why the speaker also agrees why people were worried so he explained first what kind of symptoms but they went to bush because they were fearful of what might happen to them if they were treated so they were they were fearful about the treatment and then he himself acknowledged that it was natural because the fatality rate was very high and the patients who entered in the treatment facility were never seen by their family members again so everyone thought that they were dying because of going into the hospital rather than uh, you know being recovered from the treatment they were getting more ill okay so this is again like your pre listening and how you interpret the question that plays an important role now let us look at next two questions and here uh, first i want all of you to read it and then i'm going to ask uh, all of you to explain me what do you think is the focus of each question and each answer choice as well and what do you predict would be the type of conversation uh, in this part of the test and what would be the conversation if that particular answer is correct what do you predict okay. so go ahead with the reading the questions and then i'm going to ask each one of you to answer it can put your microphones on when we discuss it. and also try to identify the differences um you know amongst the answer choices how answer choices are different from each other try to highlight negative words if there are any negative words in the answer choice so again this is opinion question where you have to find out opinion of dr munro about 
specifically the specialized clothing that they had to wear during this uh, or while providing treatment. So you have the negative words, unnecessarily uncomfortable. Their own health was affected or it was affecting the ability to treat patients. Okay, so can I now ask each one of you, uh, let me start with Pankti. What do you think if Pankti, if A is the correct answer, what kind of discussion can you expect here? Uh, unnecessarily uncomfortable? Maybe they, maybe he felt uneasiness and Un not feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And what does this unnecessarily mean? It means they feel uncomfortable or uneasiness that that may not be necessary. What may not be necessary? Whatever they feel uneasiness or uncomfortable. Maybe no. Not. How? How oh, uncomfortableness cannot be necessary or necessary. It's, you know, you feel uncomfortable whether it is necessary or not. It says it was unnecessary. Maybe fail or maybe not fail. No, unnecessary means whether you need it or not. So do I, can I choose whether I can feel un uncomfortable or not? No, I can't choose it, right? Maybe they fail or not fail. No unnecessarily uncomfortable that means he thinks that the those protective gears that they were wearing they were uncomfortable and they were also unnecessary there was no need to use such protective gear in his opinion doesn't it mean that yes because uncomfortableness cannot be necessary or unnecessary the protective gears that they had to wear can be necessary or unnecessary. Okay, then for option B, his own health was affected by having to wear it. So here, can I ask Krishna to explain? Uh, maybe by wearing uh, some kind of uh, uncle. Uh, unpleasant like uh, sometimes we have to wear a uh, tight mask due to that tight mask we get uh, rashes on our nose mm -hmm. that yes so some impact on their health mm -hmm. because of it okay and dr kathan can you tell us what do you expect from c yes yeah. mm -hmm. so because because he had to wear that uncomfortable clothes that might affect his ability to treat the patient. He was not able to treat the patient how efficiently he could treat the hmm. yes. condition. So it, it is it somehow affected his ability to treat the patients. Maybe um, you know less physical contact with the patient or um, not being able to touch the patient, not being able to feel the patient's uh, uh, you know kind of when you touch the patient, you can actually feel a lot of physical assessment that you do uh, also depends on this, that you actually touch the patient, for example, checking their temperature, checking pulse, uh, pulse for the patient. So this kind of things can be interrupted because of it. So do you notice one thing that all three options are negative in some way, right? At least you can make out that he was not very happy about wearing those protective gears. Now, what you have to find out is whether he thinks they were not necessary, whether he thinks that it was affecting their own health, was that the concern for him, or whether he was concerned about his ability to treat patients. It, we have got so far know that, you know, definitely something was wrong about the protective gears. Now, in what ways it was wrong, whether it was completely unnecessary, he thinks that they could have worked even without protective gears, then A is the answer. Otherwise, it could be B or C. Okay. Then 34. Can any one of you tell me what kind of question is this? Uh, 
this is very very common of listening part c where they would go on to give a presentation or case presentation about a particular patient what yes what kind of question is this opinion question um no this is not opinion question Dishan, you say something. Uh, is, uh, uh, what kind of question do you think it is? About uh, you can say uh, idea. Hmm, this is purpose question. Purpose. Okay. Purpose question because see, uh, it is telling us that he is giving out a story of a girl called Emma. But what is he trying to highlight? Yeah, what is his intention? What is he trying to prove with this story? So that is typically purpose question where uh, the patients, uh, sorry, the speaker may go on to give or describe a study or statistics or experiment or a particular patient. And then the question would ask us, what is he trying to prove? Why is he giving this example? Right? So here also it is given that he's trying to highlight something with this example so you should not go or take you should not be taken away by the example itself you have to think why is he giving this example what is he trying to prove with this example so even young children were at risk is he trying to prove that tragic individual stories were okay is he trying to show how tragic the stories were or how single minded Medical staff had to be. What do you mean by single minded? Focused, uh, how to follow something. Yeah. yeah, single minded means when you are focused on one thing and you are not getting distracted by the emotional disturbances or, uh, you know, the kind of uh, situations that occur when you are in uh, such an epidemic and when you are treating the patients out there. So, here, um, you know, when it comes to purpose question, it's very, very important to pay attention to what the interviewer is asking. Yes, because interviewer has asked a question and then the doctor is going to give one example to answer that question. So listening to interviewer can also be very helpful when you are dealing with purpose question so that you understand what is he trying to prove to this example? What is he trying to explain? to this example. Okay, so now I would play these two questions, 33 and 34. Clothing while treating patients with Ebola. Yes, that's correct. It's a little beyond the traditional white coat a lot of patients associate with doctors in a hospital setting. I would wear my scrubs and then I would put on a pair of thick rubber boots that came up to my knees. After that, I had to get dressed in a bodysuit, then two pairs of gloves, a face mask, a hood that covered my neck, and finally goggles. The overall impression is similar to that of a spacesuit. In the tropical heat and humidity, it was suffocating. You lose about three to five liters of sweat, then spend the next two hours hydrating before you go back in. It does limit the level of care you're able to provide because it prevents you from physically contacting your patients. And that reduces the amount of sensory input we usually get as part of our jobs as physicians. But it also saves your life. And is there a particular case that sticks in your mind for any reason? Yes, one particular case involved a young girl, let's call her Emma, she was part of a small cohort of patients we had to deal with where someone in the family would test positive for the disease and someone else would be negative. And once a patient had tested negative, they had to leave the unit for their own safety. The little girl was six years old and she'd contracted the virus, but her mother hadn't. So I had no option but to escort her away. They were both terrified about what lay ahead of them. The girl died four days after they were separated, but her mother survived. I think, in some ways, this story really brings home to me just how awful things could be during this outbreak. You know, the kind of personal tragedies that people had to live through. You're back. Okay, so now 
Okay, so. Okay, so let me this time do it the other way around. Funky seems quite confused. A, B, C, all three options. And Kishan doesn't seem to have answered 33. You can only see your answer for fourth one. Okay, yeah, third, you have written C and fourth is B. Okay, that's great. Hmm, okay, so uh, a lot of you could get 33 correct, which is C for sure, because um, he definitely did not say it was unnecessary, right? You could clearly hear when he said that it saves lives. So definitely it was uncomfortable for him, but I had to get dressed in a bodysuit. Okay. The overall impression was like a spacesuit and it was very difficult. They used to sweat a lot and then they had to hydrate themselves. But the point he was trying to make is it does limit the care. Remember, I have suggested this before as well. Whenever you're trying to emphasize something, you would separate do and does from the verb, even if you are making a sentence. Usually when do we separate do and does is when we are making a question. Do you like it? Does she like it? But in sentence, I would I would rather say I like it. But if I say I do like coffee, I'm trying to emphasize it a lot. So here also it's, he says, instead of saying it limits, he's saying it does limit. So that is something he's trying to emphasize. Okay, but it also saves your life. So it saves your life. That is something that helps you to rule out A. A says unnecessary. Does he think it is unnecessary? No, because it saves your life. So it, it tells us that it is necessary for him to wear it. It is uncomfortable? Yes. Was it affecting any way in the, on their health? No. They just mentioned that they had to drink a lot of water because there was a lot of humidity and because of that they would perspirate a lot. But nothing on nothing about the impact on their own health because of it. Okay, and 34, I can see all of you have got quite confused between uh, options B and C. Right? So yeah, so he did explain um, you know how horrible the stories could be, but what was the question asked by interviewer is that, is there any case that sticks to your mind? Okay. And then he explained this story of the girl, which actually was quite a tragic story. But what he was trying to prove through this is that the healthcare professionals, because he also explained the take home message for him. Can you see here? that 
the take home message for him i think in some ways this story really brings home to me just how awful things could be during this outbreak you know the kind of personal tragedies that people have to live through so what he has learned through this that was he that was something he was trying to highlight not just how tragic the stories could be but how he had to work in that situation because the question was also asking him to explain something that he still remembers about his experience right so we did one um we did three types of questions we did one uh, opinion question one attitude question attitude and opinion is more or less the same the same strategy that you use we did one purpose question and one detail question our main idea question will be getting the overall idea okay so look at this now this is a main idea question treating ebola patients in liberia has made munro so what is this question asking how it has changed him isn't it how he has changed after treating the patient and dr munro explains that ebola may spread to other parts because so here also i have to get a gist of what is being explained i am leaving um, the keywords on to you okay and so i'll give you one minute time to read through the answer choices and then i would play it straight away without discussing the answer choices further always try to identify the difference between the answer choices whether they are negative or positive whether they are on a particular topic now i'm playing this part hello now do you think you approach your job here any differently now as a result of the work you did in liberia mm that's a good question i do think it's made me more sensitive to how important it is to make a real connection with your patients one of the things we had to do for our patients in liberia in addition to just trying to blunt the worst effects of an appalling illness was also to try and manage their anxieties and fears i'd like to think that i'd been aware of the need to do that before but now i think i understand the principle behind it in an entirely new way and that's informing the work i do with my regular patients back home and do you believe ebola is something the rest of the world should be more concerned about Well I know the disease has spread further and I'm not surprised. In a recent case in Nigeria, a man infected with Ebola collapsed at a crowded international airport. He later died and the authorities had to closely monitor nearly 60 people he might have come into contact with. The majority of people think that Ebola is a dramatic disease that kills people in no time. The reality is that the incubation period is 21 days and because the disease can spread from one infected person to another person via direct contact with blood or body fluids the potential for spread outside of West Africa is there good infection control should prevent this happening
So this time I just want to open up this forum and I want all of you to discuss it with each other. Uh, for example, some of you have in 35, some of you have chosen uh, A as the answer. Almost everyone has chosen A. So, okay, nothing to debate about 35. Uh, in 36, some of you have chosen B, some of you have C. So, yeah, can, can we discuss that? Those people who have chosen B, can you explain us why B and those who have chosen C? So, let us start with those who have chosen C. Can you tell us why have you chosen C as the answer? Why did you choose C as the answer? Yes, ma'am. He told uh, if anyone person in the crowd, they can easily transmit this disease. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we did hear, um, you know, one person who collapsed in the crowd and then they had to put in time the rest of the group. Okay, so how um, those people who have selected B would defend them? Can you explain them? Why have you chosen B or how did you rule out C? Please no. explain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Intubation time is longer than they think. Mm -hmm. approximately 28 days something mm -hmm. intubation time is longer mm -hmm. and it is caused by uh, like blood or body fluid contact mm -hmm. yeah Kathan, you were saying something yeah so people think that ebola is a dramatic disease mm -hmm. yes people think that it can develop in no time, no time. but in it is like, in fact yeah, longer than people think. So this is very, very important. Okay, always keep an eye on answer choices which are making comparison. So here you can see comparison that uh, because of plane travel, it will spread much easier. Incubation period is longer than people think. And yeah, they, they did talk about a person who collapsed in the crowd, but then they explained that it spreads mainly through the body fluids right so it doesn't spread through the aerosols or it doesn't spread through uh, it's not basically an airborne disease yeah so here you can see that he explained that a person was in a crowd he was in a crowd he was at a crowded international airport so again here it was not a crowd but they have said crowded international airport okay and then he collapsed and he later died and because of that people had to be monitored but then they made it clear that it it spreads through direct contact or blood or body fluid whereas if you look at the answer choice it says it can spread in the crowd so if it is with direct contact or if it is with body fluids, it cannot spread in the crowd, right? Only those people who physically touch the patient would get it. Or those who have directly come into contact with any of the body fluids would get it. So that helps me. So basically, again, just going by one word will be the worst case scenario. If you would go just by one word, 99% of the time, you would end up choosing wrong answer. So go for the overall idea. You need to actually tune into what is being discussed there. And that is the reason why so many practice tests have been given to all of you. And that too in a level. Um, so that when you are doing beginners, they are comparatively easy. As you move forward to intermediate or advanced, you move on to the toughest test the advanced is the real difficulty level that is the reason when you would preparing you would be preparing for your final exams you would uh, practice from advanced so you can practice with the actual uh, you know difficulty levels they are the test papers from the most recent exams 